What's up, potheads and political junkies? You're watching Cannabis Culture News Live. I'm Jeremiah Vandermeer, editor of Cannabis Culture Magazine. It's Friday, the 24th of August. I'm drinking a fat coffee here, try and perk myself up a bit. I'm with Karina, contributor to Cannabis Culture, and also my girlfriend, who hasn't really been on the show that much, actually, Karina. I think this is my first time. Mm. This is your first time. You've been on the show, but you've never been my primary guest before. No, I've never been on your show. You've never been on at all? Mm -mm. Oh, I've been, been on Greg's show Greg's lots, show. but not oh, on Jeremy's long show. Long overdue then. You sound kind of upset about that or no, something. No, not at all. <laughs> uh, well, and the reason I'm having you on the show today, Karina, is because you came with me, and you have come with me to the last four hemp fests and helped me cover them for Cannabis Culture Magazine, taking photos, video, and the like. And uh, we're going to talk to you about your experiences at hemp fest. And also, we're going to talk about Shambhala 2012. So not only did we just get back, I just got back from Seattle Hemp Fest with Karina. Before that, I also got to go to Shambhala, which is a music festival in Salmo, British Columbia. A big, massive music festival. And there's Willie Dog. What's up, Willie? Not much. Just Your beard looks crazier than my beard right now. Come over here. Because you beat me in the beard competition, come and show these people. And Marius, I'm wondering if maybe we should get a little bit of a tighter shot. We got lots of headroom above us in the shot there. It looks kind of silly, you know what I'm saying? Look at that crazy beard. This is my beard. That thing, I thought mine was a little shaggy and nuts, but uh, you're looking Amish almost. My girlfriend makes me. Guttermouth made fun of me for being Amish. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. Oh, you're bringing it celebrity style. Awesome. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> nice. Uh, you want to smoke a joint with us, Willie? Sure, I'll smoke a joint with you. We were just talking about going to Seattle Hemp Fest. Karina and I just got back. It was really amazing, really awesome. It was crazy. It was. The, it is the world's largest pot protestable. It's a festival and a protest at the same time. But 300,000 people or more come out for it. And man, you you can tell it's 300,000. It is just so that's packed. Like 420 times 30. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, and imagine that stretched all along the waterfront of the Seattle coastline there, down on Myrtle Edwards Beach. It's a beautiful park, and it's pretty It's pretty huge. Three full days of it. Not, it used to be that it was just two days, Saturday, Sunday. Now they've added the Friday, and it's, uh, it's pretty amazing. Thanks, Marius. That's a little better. Nice. And sweatiness is around the stock up the stairs. Oh, nice. <laughs> we need we a lighter. Three, three sets a of lighter, stairs. Marius? Yeah, we, we're smoking. We got some different bags of herb what here. Are we um, this, I believe, is the what is this? What's that? The, it's a something Kai cheese. Kai Kush? No, it's oh. UK cheese. Oh, UK, UK cheese. cheese. Yeah. Okay, UK cheese. All right. Um, and so when we were in Seattle as well, uh, we had a great time there. Washington State was very hospitable as it always is. But of course, there was a little bit of controversy right around this time of year in Washington um, because Initiative 502 and an election is coming up. There's a ballot initiative to legalize marijuana in the state. But unfortunately, it contains some really lame DUI stuff, some provisions that would make a very small amount of marijuana in your blood the, the legal limit. And so there's a lot of people in Washington state who don't support Initiative 502 and they think that it will be more regressive than progressive. Um, I disagree with them, but I do appreciate the criticism from them uh, about the bill because I think the bill was poorly written in that sense. They have and some valid points. They have a lot of valid points. But it, it doesn't stop the, it's legalization or not legalization. One part of it is yeah. it's like when they make it, when they made the medical stuff legal in California, there are people that right. are pissed off about that. They right. said, oh, Prop this, 19. Is, this, isn't, this isn't all of it, but it was a step in the right and it, direction. And it sucks that we've got to this point and we're here now where we have to make the decision between a pretty shitty, uh, an, an initiative that's not necessarily completely bad, but has some bad parts in it. But then you um, fight those parts. Later. Well, and that's what you that's can do. And, and we've, and in the panel that was presented there at Seattle Hemp Fest, before we go any further, we'll just talk quickly about this 502 thing, get it out of the way. Um, the, at the panel... Um, they had a debate at Seattle Hemp Fest in the Hemposium. It was one of the most uh, sought after events of the whole thing. I think it was packed with people. And they had some people talking. Allison Holcomb of New Approach Washington was there. And she was explaining that those, there's already legislation moving forward in the state of Washington to correct some of the stuff that's in the bill. That's so it, you know, just because an initiative happens, there's a lot of critics who say, well, you can't do any amendments for two years. But you can actually do through legislation changes that would fix some of the parts of the bill. So, and as with these things, I want the headlines to read after it, you know it passes or fails. I would rather it pass and have the headlines read: Washington State legalizes marijuana stores. 
You know, that's yeah. what's going to happen. They're going to have stores that sell marijuana. So that's a good thing. But of course, some people believe that the cops are going to start going buck shit crazy once this thing passes, going after people for DUIs. But it seems a little counterintuitive to me that when the state and everybody there legalizes marijuana and thinks that it's legalized, there's a big legalization bill that passes, and already police priority is going down. We're seeing in Washington State and other places where the cops aren't going after people as much. Although, well, of course, the federal government is going after the state of Washington pretty vigorously, and uh, there's that <coughs> to consider as well. So there's a lot of debates on both sides. Karina, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say that it's, it's kind of mainstream, because while we were there, we did see commercials that were targeted to yeah. moms and, and people like that the commercial started well I don't like it but isn't it time we legalize so they're, they're targeting exactly the like mainstream moms. the moms and like just right and that's who we need like because those are the only yeah. people who vote as much as I love all the pot people you know pot people don't usually vote sadly um, but of course we don't want to screw the medical people around by having some legal limit that's going to stop them from being able to drive any time at all so I mean that is definitely a concern in the bill and I think a lot of the medical people are worried about it for that reason because you... people smoke and drive all the time I smoke and drive all the time and I don't think it impairs me I don't think there should be any limit at all because it's about impairment it's not about how much you have in your blood exactly. if you're too impaired then are you getting worried about me? Yeah, I'm not going to hit you with it. You're leaving it really close to my face. That's, we're a little tight in here. I Don't you worry. There's people out there that probably aren't supposed to drive unless they're on a certain kind of psychological medication. And you can <laughs> probably draw the probably out there that that's the truth. That's what I said earlier on a different show. I drive so much on weed that me driving without weed would probably be worse. Well, I mean, I don't well, ever not smoke weed. So I'd be out of my head if I didn't. You haven't driven in a while, but when you did drive... Right. I haven't driven for a while because I haven't paid off all my damn tickets. <laughs> Everybody needs to pay attention. I haven't driven own, legally in a while, I their guess. Their own headspace, whether no matter what they're doing. Like, there's guys that can have three beers and be definitely fine driving, and then there's little tiny guys that'll have the same three beers and say they're fine driving and go and crash a car. I've almost been killed right. by a drunk driver, and I still think people can make that personal choice. Like, it's not... Well, it's, you, now booze with, might be a little bit a, different of a thing than pot. Well, you, there certainly should be legal limits on it, but there is like people, people can have a beer or two and and oh, and still be fine to drive. And Absolutely, be fine to drive. I don't and some people that, more than I others. You have that choice, like it's, right. as long as you're not putting other people in danger. And I really believe when they're testing people for these things, it should be about their level of impairment, not exactly. necessarily the substance in their blood. Are we okay for everything, Marius? You looked oh, something happened. There. Sorry, that was me. You're fired. Oh, oh sorry, Marius is getting <laughs> caught on the joint. You weren't in the um, circle. Marius, you have to do this because I can't see it from where I am. So, um, so anyways, I want to play vi a bunch of videos because when we were at Seattle Hemp Fest, we recorded like 25 videos, and they've all just about been uploaded already to YouTube and Pot TV. There's a few that aren't on the front page of Pot TV yet. <coughs> they will all be up by the end of tonight or tomorrow. Every video that we have. And I also took, Karina and I both took like 3,000 photos when we were at the three day event, Hempfest. We've narrowed them down to about 600, which are up on my Facebook account right now. Those will be on the front page of Cannabis Culture as well this evening in a post that also has a link to the videos. So, and actually, right now on the front page of Pot TV and Cannabis Culture, you can find a story called Cannabis Culture News Live, higher than ever at Seattle Hempfest in Chambla 2012. That contains links to all of the photo galleries and to the videos that we have online. So check that out. In fact, I will even share that in the chat with you guys right here. And there it is. So um, the Hempfest videos, I think we, I want to start with a couple Hempfest videos. When we play a couple of these Hempfest videos, we'll come back, and then we're going to talk a little bit about Shambhala as well. We're going to kind of go back and forth between the two through the show, and I'm going to play some videos from Shambhala as well, some music stuff. Uh, we have a, uh, sorry, a video from Excision. We have a video from Pretty Lights and a video from Wicket the Instigator, all three kick-ass shows at Shambhala. Um, some more mind-blowing than others, but uh, we'll let you guys decide if you like them or not. I think, Marius, to start with, we should go to Vivian McPeak's just quick little one-minute intro thing that he was doing, I recorded. This is Vivian McPeak rallying for freedom at Seattle Hempfest on the main stage, and I believe it was on Saturday. Marius, you got that one? Got Let's go to her. Tomorrow will be our message until we can change the law. Now give me an H that they can hear up there. Give me an H! Yeah. No man, I need a loud H they can hear up there. Give me an H! Yeah. Give me an E! Yeah. Give me an F! Yeah. Give me a P! Yeah. What's that spell? Yeah. 
I got something more important. Give me an F. Yeah. Give me an R. R. Give me an R. E. e. Give me another E. e. Give me a D. E. Give me an o. o. Give me an M. Yeah. Now let me hear you. What's that spell? Freedom. What's that fest about? Freedom. What do we want? Freedom. All right. If we can be responsible and keep things safe, we there's no doubt we're going to get our freedom because America always, America always corrects its mistakes. Americans always manage to get the freedom they deserve. If we can deserve it by being responsible, I guarantee you we'll get it. Yeah. If we screw it up, it'll take our next another generation or two, but we're going to get it eventually. I want to go to the. Uh... Oh, nice. So that was just Vivian. That was Vivian. Vivian is the head organizer of Seattle Hempfest. He's been there for years and years. He wrote a book recently called Protestable about the Seattle Hempfest. This is the 21st year of Seattle Hempfest, so it's been going on for a long, long time. And it's all done with volunteer activism. Everybody there, nobody there is paid. Everybody there is on their own steam, and it's pretty cool to see it happen. They have a massive army, basically, of volunteers wearing staff shirts. And the place is just run so smoothly, it's hard to believe that they pull it off. Viv always seems like he's a little stressed out uh, in the beginning hours of the festival. And then after a few, he relaxes a bit and we realize that the damn thing is going so smoothly, it's just unbelievable. Every year, like we have, you know, they have a bunch of different stages, I believe. They have four, four stages originally and then at the very end of the park now, they have a, a, a dub fifth step. One. Yeah, stage. it's a, the bass drop stage, yeah, so it's, it's for electronic music. And, and then the other stage is... the tent and an electronic music tent, so that, that's a lot for it being a volunteer event, plus food vendors and clothing vendors and pipe vendors. It's amazing. Everything you can imagine pot-related is there in some shape, form, or fashion. So not only are there vendors selling every kind of pot product available, and more pot related and hemp related like not pot uh, infused edibles they don't sell those there legally um, there are people in the crowd selling everything you can imagine as well more this year so than other years more but, openly too yeah there's more open sales of marijuana there for sure this year than other years but um, in the crowd or sorry in the actual vendors there are lots of different types of hemp food more than I've seen mm -hmm. anywhere else ice hemp cream, hamburgers cookies yeah ice cream all kinds of everything. stuff everything and uh, that's really, I don't know, in the States, they seem to take it to a new level. We don't really have a lot of that going on in Canada no. yet, I don't think, or at least not here in Vancouver. No. Um, I wish we had more. I'd love to go and get a hemp hamburger somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Or hemp ice cream. Yeah, and that's, oh. the hemp ice cream is delicious, too. It's really good. So, yeah, it was very cool. And those stages, it does take a lot to maintain those stages. We were backstage, of course, at the different stages. Show them your pass, Karina. That's our. That's the the pass you get when you're a media person, and we also get a speaker's a pass <laughs> because we hang with Miss Jody Emery, who spoke four times or five times this time. Um, I think she was scheduled to speak four times, but then if we're ever hanging out at a stage long enough, someone will not show up, and they always want her to speak more. Yeah. So they have her come on. Um, I think she went on five times, and she was asked to speak a six on Sunday, but we had to leave. They so, treat us like gold when we're there. They love amazing. Jody so much, and everybody. So Vivian actually said he thought Jody was the best speaker of the in the history of the event. He did say that, and they've had some massive speakers there before, like Dennis Kucinich and lots of judges and political personas. Judge Jim Gray was there. Yeah, he was speaking. He's the vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. He was fantastic. We're going to play that video as well. Also, the mayor of Seattle was there. Mike McGinn, I believe, is his name. Mm -hmm. He spoke. Um, that video is not online yet, but I think I do have that video. Somewhere. Yes. Well, that's the one. There's two videos missing. There's Jody's main stage speech and the mayor's speech, but those will be up soon. Um, so I thought maybe we'd play another one of these videos. And Marius, can you read me? There's Judge Jim Gray. What are the other ones I have there? I uh, have Radical Russ Belleville. I think we should watch Russ. Let's watch Radical Russ Belleville. Oh, it's 420. We're going to have to have a bong rip before we go to the video, I guess that means. Duchess, good to be back with her. My other girlfriend. <laughs> um, let's see here. Yeah, so when we, after we take this puff, I'm going to play a video by Radical Russ Belleville, who was speaking about the Initiative 502 thing. A lot of the speeches were focused around 502. Now, David Malmo-Levine was on one of the shows earlier. I believe it was Monday he popped in for an appearance on Opus 
live with McMahon, and I was on that show talking a little bit about the issue, and David said he thought it was pretty evenly split in the community in Washington State, but I would tend to disagree. I still think there's more people on the yes side. More, All of the organizations across the United States are supporting it. There are a few people from within the, each organization maybe that don't support it. I believe MPP is totally on board. Um, but I, I think that the people who are against it, are there are some credible people, but the arguments that I've heard have not been rational enough for me. Carrie Boyder is probably the most well-spoken of all of the critics, um, and Doug... Doug Hyatt what came on my show earlier and talked a little bit about it. He had some good points, but even in listening to Carrie and others, it's just not convincing enough for me. I, I believe that the laws can continue to be changed afterward, and having the momentum of a legalization initiative passing in Washington State that would allow everybody to carry up to an ounce of pot and create stores, even if the federal government comes through and says you can't do that, that is still such a massive win. And it's a, message it's a huge, out. it is. And other politicians and other people in the United States and uh, you know around the globe will hear that L Washington State legalized pot stores. They won't hear the details of there's a DUI, a nanogram limit of something, and so on and so forth. There is an argument, and people like David Malmo Levine have made it before that this could be a net widening issue. That they're, you know, this is a conspiracy hidden away, and it's by the people who want to make profits from it. Uh, they, we've even been accused. There's people in. They're accusing Canadians. I, I'm not sure if they're ref talking about Mark and Jody or something. They want to make money from it somehow or something. So there's a lot of conspiracies around this whole 502 thing. And, of course, I understand that because a lot of conspiracies do happen. Um, and there are lots of nasty government organizations doing secretive type of things. For sure. Absolutely. I just don't believe the people behind Initiative 502 have that intention. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, and... I'll let you guys uh, read a little bit more here, but let's take a bond rip. Karina, do you want a bond rip? No, thank you. I'm going to put links to some of the, the better articles I've read <clears throat> about the 502 debate on both sides. I think there's credible also, arguments. Also, I just want to say that um, the festival stayed neutral on the issue. They decided not to put their opinion in, but they let all the speakers, and they even had a debate there. So... Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Vivian McPeak, I, I think originally was not a supporter of it, but everybody at the festival who was running things really allowed everybody to go up and talk, and everybody just wanted friendship at the festival, which was great. And it always feels like that, regardless of what the, the political whatever is in... Stigmas yeah, around are, things it always or feels like contentiousness. everyone's loving each other and happy, and they just want this plant to become legal so that they don't have to hide and, and be labeled criminals. I don't think there's a lot of people in the pot movement who want to fight. No. Not really. Not in this movement. People don't like fighting. Here, Karina. No, I'm not. You're not going to hit no. the bong? Okay. <laughs> All right. They like pretty girls hitting the bong on this show. Yeah. Well. There's not enough of them. All right. I should have asked you a question before I hit it. Mm. Mm. What did you think, Karina, of the way they had the, the backstage areas set up for us? Um, I love the backstage areas. Um, Sealy stage especially. I'll, I'll just say shout out to Sealy stage. stage. Mama Donna they had a and Gary. Taco bar back there They're this year. They're so amazing. They always have the best food and the best company and it's just great. And Sealy stage has the best music. <laughs> Sealy stage has some cool reggae vibes. Yeah, going on. it's a good vibe back there. Yeah, they they kind of split the stages up over the day between speakers and musical acts couple speakers go up <coughs> and they have a musical act like how we do at 420 or cannabis day and uh, it seems to balance out nice I did get to, a chance to visit the bass drop stage <coughs> this year a little bit took some photos there of uh, hula hoopers and such mm -hmm. they're pretty cool it was I like having the the uh, electronic music stage there they have a great variety of everything so that and that's why so many people show up it's because there's something for everyone so yeah. It's a great place to be. <laughs> it is. It's cool. It's very... And if anybody... I mean, geez, if you get a chance, it's free. That's the crazy thing about it. It doesn't cost any money. All this stuff is brought to you basically for nothing. I mean, it costs a lot to put it on, but the people going there don't have to contribute at all if they don't want to, though they do have donation buckets everywhere. Yes, and we urge everyone to donate yeah. so that it can keep happening every year. 
when it just shows that pop people can, you know, do things and like, yeah, you know, yeah, form, anybody who says yeah, that, that pop people are, are lazy, lazy, sitting on the couch, go man. to Hempfest. Those are those people are all there. Some of them they like don't sleep they just work and they clean up the park like on friday when we went i saw so much garbage and on saturday it was all cleaned up and that's volunteers overnight, there yeah. overnight picking up well garbage and then imagine and, on sunday how much is left behind and they spend uh, several days cleaning it up it's pretty crazy it's amazing um <clears throat> also i i see that there were a few people in the chat who were actually there and uh, i think they probably had a good time too bass drop was all loud says aftershock phil um, the cops, the cops work really cool there this year. I've seen other years in the in the past. I think a couple years ago, we saw the cops shaking some kids down on and the rocks the lead. by the by the but water. The, yeah. <coughs> Pardon me. The cops this year were very cool. Didn't really screw with anybody. And also, I noticed that the festival itself wasn't as hardcore. Like usually, Vivian and other people get really mad at people if they're smoking pot on the path, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of enforcement, self uh, regulation of weed smoking down on the rocks on the beach. But this year, there were people smoking pot everywhere. Everywhere. And I think maybe it's because the medical community is getting so strong in Washington, um, and there's so many people who are medical users that how can you ask them to go anywhere? It's not really the festival's business to be telling people to go down to the water and smoke. If people want to smoke on the grass and they have a medical license to do it then that's up to them. But you don't mm -hmm. have to ask if they have a medical license. So there you go. Um, Marius, what do you think? We're going to watch Russ Belleville now? Uh, yeah. Okay, this is Russ at Sealy Stage. And Russ is talking about Initiative 502. He is a supporter of the yes side. He thinks that people should vote yes on 502. But he's talking about unity. And uh, he was wearing a red shirt because the Hempfest Festival is kind of split between blue and red, the yes and no sides. Um, red being the no side. So it was a... It was an olive branch, I guess. So anyways, check out Russ Belleville at Seattle Hempfest 2012. So here's one thing where I think there's some, some fear that's a little, well, I'm glad you're getting this fear because you should have had this fear all along, and that's this fear of DUIs. And I think that a lot of people, people I respect, by the way, some of my best friends in this movement are on the opposite side of this issue from me. But what I think is missing is that some people may think that yeah. you're not getting DUIs now. No, 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 no. You're getting discriminated and getting DUIs now, right now. If you're out driving and your nanograms are above five, like everybody's always worried about this five thing, right? Oh, I went to sleep, I woke up the next day, 10 hours later, I'm still at 10. Okay, if you're driving now, and a cop finds a reason to pull you over now, and I don't care, broken taillight, missed tag, whatever, finds a reason to pull you over now, and finds a reason to think you're impaired, whether you are, or he's an asshole, and he's making it up, whatever, and he makes you do that sobriety test now, and you find some way to fail it, maybe through no fault of your own, maybe you got bad balance, doesn't matter, but if you fail it now, and then that goes to the prosecuting attorney's office with the cop's report that said, I observed a guy that was driving badly, I smelled marijuana on them, we got this blood test, and it's 10 nanograms per milliliter, you're getting a DUI now. You're not getting out of that, okay? You're already, you should, if the people who are saying no on Fiverr 2 are trying to terrify you with the thought, oh my God, if I go drive, I'm gonna get a DUI, you should be terrified now. Because that's the law now. It's against the law to drive with THC in your blood. Now, when they say, well, it's not scientific, you're damn right it's not scientific. I am a complete agreement with you. I have read more research papers on marijuana and driving than you have read books in school. I will guarantee you that. I spoke on a monthly and weekly basis with Paul Armentano from Normal, the number one expert in the country, if not the world, on this research. I know this research better than you do. I know it's unscientific, but guess what? Politics is unscientific. And let me give you an example. I come from the state of Oregon, where I'm a registered medical marijuana caregiver for my wife, who is a patient. Thanks to that law, I can possess up to 24 ounces of marijuana and cultivate up to 24 plants. But the rules that govern those plants say that I can only have six mature plants and 18 immature plants. Like other medical marijuana states, there are some that have that as well. But Oregon is the only one where they define a mature plant as any plant that is taller than 12 inches. How many growers out there have 13-inch 
vegetating plants? Anybody? Vegetating a 13-inch plant, 14-inch plant? That's a mature plant. Whether it has buds or not, any plant bigger than 12 inches is a mature plant. So when I hear 502 people, no, on 502 people telling me, well, we can't enshrine an unscientific arbitrary limit that might hurt patients into law, I go, how about that 12-inch line that we voted for in Oregon that we passed for medical marijuana that hurts patients when they go away for the weekend and their seedlings become 13 inches tall and make them a felon? Why was it okay to vote for that to protect patients, but not okay to vote for 502 to protect the mass amount of people who aren't patients who possess And I hope that everybody understands that as passionate as I get about this issue, I write a lot, I live in cyberspace, where the rules of common decency do not apply. And I've seen comments and vitriol and articles from people who know better, calling people in the movement who dedicated their lives, people whose husbands are in prison, people who have lost their families, their friends, their businesses, their whole life, dedicated to this movement, getting called the most scurrilous names, being subject to the most heinous of threats, even, over this issue. I wore this red shirt today on purpose. While I'm on this blue team, I also support my red friends as well, and I can't believe that Hempfest has turned into a goddamn electoral college map with red and blue states in it. Because no matter what happens with I-502, we all have to work together to either fix what we're with 502 or come up with the next one that's going to make it better because I don't live in a red hemp fest I don't live in a blue hemp fest I live in a red white and blue America where we're all fighting for the freedom to use this plan any damn way we choose and I love my brothers who are anti 502 I love my friends who are pro 502 and I will always support all of us until we end this damn prohibition that is hurting this planet and this world thank you ncr420.com much, Russ. Now, that is telling it like it is. I'm telling you, right, we're sick of this shit. We're not going to take it anymore. That's right. And the BS on us. Nice. All right, that was Russ Belleville. And, yeah, Russ is a passionate speaker, and that was just a little small sample. Um, but Russ has actually written a bunch of great articles about this topic. You can find a lot of stuff from Russ at his website, um, which is, let me just get the actual one. I think it's just russbellville.com, but uh, we'll look that up. And yeah, actually, we have been putting Russ's show, which he does almost every day, on Pod TV. We haven't had uh, the time to put it all up there recently, I don't believe, but uh, we'll backlog all that and make sure everything's up there, and we'll be adding Russ back to the, the regular cycle. <laughs> I've been away, um, and, uh, and Marius is a busy guy too, so. <laughs> hey, I do what you tell me. <laughs> That's all right. Well, we'll get, we'll get everything going. Um, so, also, I wanted to talk about Shambhala because it's already 4.36 on the show and we haven't even really talked about Shambhala yet. And Shambhala was just totally nuts this year. A huge music festival. Karina, you weren't there this year, but you went <coughs> one year ago before mm -hmm. 2011 Shambhala, which was totally awesome. And uh, Shambhala this year was another mind-blowing experience for me. Last year it was just totally insane. Um, the first year because I had never actually listened to really any electronic music of the genre of dubstep before and it was mind blowing it totally like broke down my uh, my I had a distaste for electronic music for a long time I didn't like four on the floor beats and when I heard dubstep everything sort of changed and then I my mind was opened up to drum and bass and this year when I was there I kind of sampled some drum and bass stuff I really liked so my musical consciousness is expanding which is kind of cool and Shambhala is definitely the place for all kind of all kinds of consciousness expanding. Um, there are every kind of drug you can imagine available there at the festival, but also people bring their own. I brought a lot of my own and still managed to find room for some that we bought there. Um, it was totally awesome. And yeah, I did, I talked about what I did at Shambhala on another show. I'll talk about it on this show as well. I did MDMA, I did MDA, I did a little bit of mescaline. Um, I sampled all of these things and I had a great time on them. They were all uh, the MDMA, I think, was my favorite of all of them. The other experiences were a little bit mild. Did you do shrooms, too? Also did mushrooms, yeah, on the first night. Did mushrooms, which was very cool. 
and I kind of was uh, off on my own for a while the first night. Um, it was interesting. I met a lot of people. That's the one thing about Shambhala, maybe that stands out more than anything, are the long-lasting relationships with the people you meet there that seem to yeah. develop afterwards. Everybody camps together in this big area. There's all these different areas and big camps, and you make a lot of really great friends. Even in the lineup, just waiting to get into Shambhala, which we waited 14 hours to get in this year. And last year, we got in pretty quick. Yeah, we got in really fast last year. How fast? I can't remember. But. I remember it was like six hours. It was like some people didn't believe us. They were like, what, six hours? It was really crazy. Yeah. But we showed up on the Wednesday, and you guys left on Tuesday. So we left on Wednesday last year. Yeah. Because we were... This waiting. year, it all depends on the day you go. If you try and get in a little bit earlier, that's when a lot of people are going, and so you can expect to be in line for a long, long time. Like 14 hours, and we were actually in the shadow of this big trailer that sat in front of us. Um, the people who uh, were re responsible for the trailer, they had actually flown from Miami to Seattle, rented a big, huge trailer, and took that to Shambhala, drove from Seattle to Salmo, BC, where the festival is. And the festival takes place out in the forest. Um, it's basically the Salmo River Ranch, they call it. It's owned by a family. And this family's been the operator of the festival for the last, well, how many, 15 years now? 14, yeah. 15 years? I should no, know that. No, this would be the third. 13th year? I think no, it's 15th. the 14th. I'm going to find that out. I'll we find that know. out. Shambhala. <laughs> uh, that's going in. I'm going to have a full report on Shambhala this year, um, uh, probably next week, uh, all the experiences that I had there. I wrote one last year that's available on CannabisCulture.com that people seem to like. Um, but I want to play one of the videos from Shambhala. Marius, I think maybe we should start with Wicket the Instigator. Oh. That's the one thing that kills me that I missed this year because I love Wicket and I was it's at my favorite stage, Fractal Forest, and I'm so sad that I missed this because it looks dope on the video. It looks so, like so much fun. Before we go into the video, maybe we should explain exactly how the whole stage area oh, okay. is set up. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's like there's yeah. six different stages of Shambhala and then there's a city area and the city area has it's like restaurants. like the downtown area. Yeah, downtown. Showers. Very yeah. important. <laughs> and lots of stores. You can buy all kinds of gear there, like clothing, different leather stuff, all yeah. kinds of crafts, arts awesome, and crafts. Awesome, like, belts where you can belt your, with pockets you can put your crap in. So when you're dancing, you don't have to carry any bags. Or, lots of cool festival yeah. stuff. And that's cool in the city. And then the stages themselves, there's six of them. One's called the Rock Pit. And it's just like a big, huge pit, basically, with a big dome over top of it, a canvas dome. But it's very cool. There's the Fractal Forest, and that's where Wicket, in the video that we're about to watch, is playing. It's my favorite. It's out in the middle of the forest, and it's, it's like an Ewok village kind of thing. Or no. It's like, no, it's like built in amongst the trees. So the lasers go through the trees, and they're sort of... There's a bunch of pyramids. Yeah. Massive. Pyramids and trees. White pyramids. And they reflect all kinds of lasers and light shows off the big white canvases of the pyramids. They're very cool. There's lots of places where you can sort of climb up to that are accessible, that aren't super high. But I have a thing with crowds because I'm very small. <laughs> so yeah. I really like that stage because it's like I can get up high enough to be like everyone as tall as everyone else. <laughs> yeah, you, the first, when we went that... It was our first time going together in 2011, mm. and it was huge. It was crazy. There's yeah. a big crowd. So if you are small, like Karina, I mean, you're you're very small. I'm four foot. Ten. I'm small, but she's even smaller. Yeah. And the crowd was a little much for you. Yeah, it got a you little. You fainted. Bit. I did faint in the crowd. At one point, just quick, just for a, a brief minute or two. But I fell. <laughs> yeah, we got we luckily caught you before you hit the ground. But it was it was scary because there was lots of um, people dressed up in crazy costumes and then you're on crazy drugs and this giant crowd of very tall people and I just got scared I think <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely when there's a lot of people wearing costumes too so you know there's some like weird looking costumes pretty trippy yeah you were tripping out too yeah. <laughs> I don't think I think our uh, psychedelic experience this year was probably better than the first year we had some bad stuff mm. I don't think the that MDMA was That first year was, was really crappy. And actually, the great thing about Shambhala and some of these other festivals is that there's a group called Anchors that shows up and they do drug testing on site. They're professionals, chemists, and the people who take care of this kind of thing, and they test right on site. They can tell you exactly what you have or uh, what they're testing for anyway. If you think you have something, you can go and find out if it is that or not. 
Now they can't tell you the purity of it, but they can tell you if it is that drug. And we had all our stuff tested. Yeah. When we were there this year, not the not original last year. year no. We didn't actually use that service the first year. I don't know why, but this year we really did use it, and uh, because we found some stuff there at the festival, and it all checked out, and it was all great. Now um, let's check this video out, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Maybe we'll go into some more Hempfest stuff, and then we'll come back and go into more Shambhala stuff. Marius, Wicked the Instigator, Fractal Forest. Woo. This is pretty dope. <laughs> Check this out. Are y'all fucking ready to party? Yeah! Y'all need to make some fucking noise! Yeah! Welcome home to the future. Thank <laughs> you. 
Wicked the Instigator at the Fractal Forest. Marius, you gonna take this bong rip? I am gonna take this bong rip. Nice. How did you know? I just knew. I could just see the look on your face. You like bong, the bong rip look. Yeah, so that was very cool. Wicked, um, you can find more information about Wicked at his SoundCloud uh, page. SoundCloud is this great, for those who don't know and haven't been to SoundCloud, check it out. It's a very cool place where people put their, musicians put up all their songs and stuff. Some of them you can download for free. Sometimes you gotta pay for them, but you can always listen to them online at the very least. <coughs> and there's sites out there that you can pinch them to if you really want to. Excuse me, almost happened. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll play a couple more Shambhala videos. I have an excision video on the play and also a pretty lights video of the end of their show, which is very cool. Um, we'll play those in a bit. But we also have more Seattle Hempfest stuff to do and talk about, so I have a feeling the show's going to go for a little while. Um, there's some great debate going on in the chat, uh, and I just want everybody to know I really appreciate the debate going on in Washington. I think it's good, and I think that any time there is a bad bill put forward like this one, and people should stand up and should oppose it and should be against it uh, because it forces the people who are crafting these things to do a better job next time. And it also, you know, I, I wish that the people who crafted New Approach Washington are these people. I wish that they would have crafted their bill in a better way that didn't bring all this, um, you know, negative stuff. And they, they didn't have to, I don't think, add that. They say that they added it because the polls show that people are very concerned about those things. So they, that might be true. They actually might be able to appeal to the straight crowd more with this bill having those things and there the, even the fact that there is a fight going on in the community that might make some of the straight guys go like oh well if some of the pop people are against it then maybe it's good i don't know who knows it's all speculation on both sides in a lot of ways um but one thing we do know is that if it passes then there will be less arrests um on the one side of people having possession it's, i can't say that for the dui law i don't know what the future holds for that if it passes who knows the cops might go crazy and start arresting people either, i don't think that's way, gonna there's happen there's a lot of work to do whether it passes or it doesn't yeah pass, if it, it passes it needs to be corrected right away completely. so we agree with that the whole all this energy that's going into the no side we could be putting that into amending it right afterwards or something like that i mean i, I still appreciate the energy that's going into it though I was going to say, considering the hysteria of the no arguments, if there is any conspiracy, it would be to, to sustain that ridiculous argument, in my opinion. Right, Marius is, a, is a, on the yes side as well. Yeah. Um, right. and, but I did, wanted to say this about the conspiracy thing. What I meant earlier, and I noticed in the chat maybe I was taken out of context, that I should use the 10-second rule. I hold the joint for a little too long, maybe. <laughs> it's the microphone. Piggy's got the conch. Um, no, but, uh, yeah, about the conspiracy thing. I didn't mean that uh, there's a conspiracy on the no side at all. I, what I was meaning is there isn't a conspiracy on the yes side, or I don't think there is. I don't think that New Approach Washington are in this for the cash, or they're trying to, you know, or like Richard Lee, the people con criticized him back in Prop 19, saying that he was just trying to make profits. He's a monopolist. He was trying to take the whole thing over. I don't believe that. I believe these people are genuine with their, their wants. And I believe Alison Holcomb of New Approach Washington actually wants to legalize and she thinks this is the best way to do it. I don't necessarily agree with her. I don't think this is the best way to do it either. But um, I don't question her motivation and think she's, a, she's part of a conspiracy to arrest more users and arrest medical patients. It doesn't make sense to me. But that's what I was meaning. I wasn't meaning that there's a conspiracy on the other side or anything like that. I think that everybody is genuine in their beliefs. I think everybody really believes what they think is right is right. And that's just how it works. And some people get emotional about it. Um, I try and stay emotionless about it and try and continue to be friends with everybody. Though I do identify that sometimes when people are jerks about it. Um, but anyways, we should watch some more videos from Seattle Hemp Fest, should Marius. play Jody, one of Jody's speeches. No, I'm going to play Jody's speech last because oh, okay. it's the 420 celebration. Okay. But we should, why don't we play... Yeah, the, now the Libertarian Party of the United States is a third option, really, 
one of the only options to Obama and Romney, I guess. Now, the Libertarian Party, I don't always agree with everything they, uh, they are on board with, um, but Gary Johnson and Judge James Gray, who are the presidential and vice presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party, are very cool guys. And I support, I, I think I'd have to support them over Obama or over Romney. No, no questions asked on that one. I would definitely support Ro either of them. Robomney. Yeah, exactly. Somebody who said Robomney? <laughs> Judge Jim Gray. Oh, yes. oh yeah, he, he says that. Robomney. Okay, right. That's actually in the speech, I think. Yeah. So, um, Marius, is it ready to roll? Let's check out Judge Gray. Judge came to, the judge came to Seattle Hempfest and met Jody, met all of us, hung out. He was a very cool guy. He sat on a panel with Jody earlier, and this was his stage from the main, or sorry, his speech from the main stage. It's pretty good. Check it out. This, this kind of progress that I just articulated, 10 victories in just one year, does not happen in a vacuum. It happens because people work year after year after year trying to change these marijuana laws and these drug laws. Judge Jim Gray is one of those people. He's been working at this for decades, and we're now seeing some of the, the fruit that that effort has borne. I met him 20 years ago at a drug policy conference in Washington, D.C. I was immediately impressed, and in fact, I learned that he was actually one of the only credible people working on the issue at the time. There were some, a couple of physicians, a couple of politicians, uh, you know, a couple of lawyers, a couple of clergy. He was a sitting judge. He actually was a judge in Southern California from 1983 to 2009. A sitting judge for 26 years. And he actually spoke out against the drug war at the beginning of that 26 year period. It wasn't the last year, it was towards the beginning. Uh, he is he is one of the most credible advocates for our cause. Uh, he's been at this for a long time, and I'm personally going to vote for Gary Johnson and Judge Jim Gray on November 6th, and I urge you to do so also. Thank you. Woo! Thank you, Rob. Let me share with you some history. I'm a former federal prosecutor, former drug warrior. I acknowledge it. I have been a trial court judge, as Rob said, in Orange County, California, a pretty conservative place. Let me share with you some more history. I have determined that what we have been doing is not only wrong, immoral, and unworkable, but it's got to change. I am here to tell you my conclusion that our failed policy of drug prohibition is the biggest failed policy in the history of the United States of America, second only to slavery. I am saying that when we repeal marijuana prohibition, everybody in the country within two or three years will look back and be absolutely aghast and astonished that we could have perpetuated such a failed system for so long. I am looking back at what? 21 years of history of Hempfest. I am proud to be a part of Hempfest. I'm proud to be with you, all of you. Where are the police? There's no police here because there's no need to have police here. Share a part of history. For years, I have been asking police officers, beat cops, how many domestic violence disturbances have you ever been to that were involved with marijuana? And you know what the answer is? Zero. I am here because Governor Gary Johnson from New Mexico came out publicly in 1999 saying, I have looked at this war, I have conducted my audit, I know what is happening is not working and we must change it. Governor Gary Johnson is a hero. He had no political constituency, no political help for that, in fact he took a lot of heat. 
but it was the right thing to do. I am asking you to support this man. He is the answer to what the United States of America needs in this issue and so many more. How many of you believe that the federal government has all the answers? No, I don't think so. How many of you believe that you as adults in Washington have the perfect ability to decide where and how to protect and defend the people of Washington? Obviously. Our campaign, Governor Gary Johnson and I, Judge Jim Gray, are endorsing both of the initiatives here in, Washington, in the state of Washington. Let's get these things forward, we'll work out our problems, but let's pass these initiatives. Every one of them. Colorado, let's pass that initiative. State of Oregon, to your south, let's pass that initiative. Let's get these medical marijuana initiatives, let's bring this true, and we will take these steps forward. When Governor Johnson asked me to be his running mate, I said, we will do this, but on one condition. And that condition is, we run to win. None of this moral victory stuff, none of this let's make a good showing, let's run to win, and he absolutely agreed. We are running to win this election, but we need your help. We will never have the hundreds of millions of dollars that the Democrats and the Republicans have, Romney and Obama. But you know something? They're so much together. I call them Robomney. They're so much together on so many issues. If you are in favor of repealing the drug war, Romney and Obama say no. Governor Gary Johnson, Judge Jim Gray say yes. I think there's a difference. You need to speak up. We won't have those hundreds of millions of dollars, but we have you. And if you take this personally, if you send this message out to your friends, your circle of influence, your emails, your Twitters, uh, Facebook, whatever you have, get this word out, it will trump their money. This is a revolution in the making. I can't see the future. I can see the past, this failed war on drugs. I can see the present, Governor Gary Johnson, Judge Jim Gray, Libertarians running for Vice President and President, but what I cannot see is the future. But you can see the future. Do you like it? Do you want this to happen? Because it will if you take it personally. So, a hero of mine in history, Thomas Jefferson, maybe you've heard of him. Thomas Jefferson said so long ago, in our fragile democracy, we must have a revolution every generation. Why? Because those special interests will inviggle their way into power and will sap our vitality and sap our strength. It's been so long. How many, rebel, how many generations has it been since Thomas Jefferson said those words? But I am here to tell you I am proud to tell you, I am invigorated and challenged to tell you, and I am excited to tell you that this revolution is now here, and it takes the form of Governor Gary Johnson and Judge Jim Gray for President and Vice President of the United States. Let's make this happen. You will be proud of that. I promise you. I promise you. Everybody that votes for Governor Johnson and Judge Gray two years from now will be downright proud of that vote. And I promise you as well, 40, 50, 60 percent of the people that do not will really wish they had. They all say, I wish I had a choice. I wish I didn't have to choose between the lesser of two evils. Because what happens when you choose between the lesser of two evils? You still get evil. We are giving you that choice. It's up to you. It's exciting to be here. I'm proud to be here. Thank you for the invitation to be here. And let's get it done. Thank you, Hempfest. Let's get this done. I'm proud to be with you. Thanks. Thank you, Judge Jim Gray. We are so honored. Let's get it done. 
vote in November if you're from the United States and think about the libertarian ticket. Uh, I would definitely choose them myself over Obama or Romney. Robomney. <laughs> Robomney. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we should also play a video from the no side of the Washington State and 502 Initiative debate. Um, I recorded this speech by Jeffrey Steinborn, who is a member of Normal, actually, and he's been on the show. Jeff is um, definitely a friend of the show, been on before, um, not about this issue, but about other stuff, and he's a drug war veteran. He's been fighting in the game for a long time. He's a lawyer, um, so I wanted to just play you guys this one. This is uh, just a three-minute, 28-second clip, Marius, if you would, and then uh, we'll, we'll talk some more on the other side. Jeffrey Steinborn! <laughs> He's on the normal legal committee. He's on the normal board of directors. That's national normal. Uh, he's been defending victims of the war on campus since 1968. He's fighting for your freedom. Let's hear it for Jeffrey Steinborn. Yeah. Anybody out there? I must, I must respectfully disagree with my colleagues because I am not in favor of I-502. I-502 does not legalize, it does not accomplish anything. It makes it worse! I'm on the board of directors of Normal, and Normal voted to support it with some very strong reservations. Our reservations were, primarily, we don't think it's going to work. In order for it to work, people who want to produce it and supply it to you consumers are going to have to register with the liquor board. The liquor board has to give their names to the federal government who promised to prosecute them. Now, in exchange for taking this risk of being prosecuted, what do you get if you're licensed to grow and sell marijuana in Washington? Hey! Given the tax scheme, you're allowed to grow marijuana you can probably sell for four or five hundred dollars an ounce. Now, who the hell is going to do that? It's just a scheme that won't work and it's a tragedy because we are ready to legalize in Washington, but I-502 doesn't do it. Now here's how you should decide if you want to vote for I-502 or not. If you believe that enough people will sign up to be producers of marijuana, given the fact that they'll probably be prosecuted and probably won't make any money, if you believe they'll do that, and if you don't want to drive anymore, because all regular users of cannabis will be disqualified from driving along with patients. Oh, come on. If you believe those things, and if you don't mind paying five, four to five hundred dollars an ounce for I-502, then you should vote for it. You don't want to talk to the people! Thank you! But, if you want to legalize, you should let them know that we're not going to buy this fraudulent attempt at fooling us and making us think it's legalized, when it's really a government sting in disguise, oh, no! when it's really sucked up all the money of the movement, we could have had money to have a good initiative, such as Sensible Washington is putting out there. We don't have the money for that, so I'm very sad, I'm very disappointed, and it kills me, after 40 years of fighting for legalization, to be up here like an idiot saying, vote against a bill that looks like legalization. And I assure you, if it really were legalization, I would vote for it. Stop for the people! So, those are my final thoughts. I leave you with one little piece of wisdom, maybe my compensation to you for listening to me. A little trick, a little tip I like to pass on that probably reduces your chances of getting busted and having to see me by about 50%. I call it Steinborn's Law. Steinborn's Law, and it's really simple. One law at a time. If you're breaking the drug laws, don't break any other laws, particularly traffic laws, because that's where most of my business comes from, is traffic offenses. So if you only break one law at a time, you're probably never going to meet me. I wish you well. Enjoy HempFest. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Can we, uh, get our way back. Nice. So that was Jeffrey Steinborn, the cannabis lawyer, um, speaking on the no side. And I think he, you know, he's got some valid points for sure, um, as the no side does. And I, I wanted to uh, definitely play at least one speech from that side. There wasn't really a heck of a lot of other spe people that were up there talking about it um, that we caught on camera. I didn't really see who else was. Ed I'm trying to. Oh, Ed, Ed Rosenthal. <clears throat> so we do have one more we're going to play. When I play the 420 celebration at Sealy Stage, um, we have both sides. We have Jody speaking for it and Ed Rosenthal speaking against it. Um, 
Yeah, but there really wasn't very many other people up there talking about uh, the no side that Car I that Carrie I ended up getting. did. Carrie at did the hemposium. at the hemposium, and Steve Elliott was yeah. at the hemposium as well. Um, and Steve Elliott, who has been sort of critical of Jody Emery calling her a trophy wife and all this stuff, it's kind of sad. He's resorting to those things. Um, I'm not sure why really he's picking on her in that way. There's a lot of people on the no side, but I don't know. It's weird. Anyways. Um, Let's play one more video from, uh, let's see, who is this now? Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine. He's the associate editor of High Times. Um, Marius, can we play that video? And then when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about Shambhala, and we'll play another Shambhala video. I'll, yeah. I'll think about it. Come on, Marius. Yo! Yo! Anybody out there? day or what? Yeah. I mean, seriously, it can't get better than this. The sun is in the sky. The stoners are on the land. Freedom is in the air. Let me tell you something. I've been coming here for years and everyone thinks that the Seattle Hemp Fest is about what? Weed. The Seattle Hemp Fest is about weed. I hear it all the time, but you know, the Seattle Hemp Fest is about weed. I think that Seattle Hemp Fest is about the most beautiful concept in human history, and that is freedom. You, you are about to experience something that hasn't happened in the United States for almost 70, 80 years. In this state, you are about to have freedom. in which there is a very good chance you are going to legalize cannabis in this state. Let's hear it, folks. You're going to do it. I'm an old man, and I've been waiting for this for a long time. I've been coming to Seattle for a long time, and if you asked me where it was going to happen first, 10 years ago, I would have said Seattle, Washington, because this is the number one marijuana protestable in the world. And what's going to happen in November in Washington State is the culmination of all the work that the Seattle Hemp Fest has done on your behalf and my behalf for the last 21 years. They are winning because they were consistent. They are winning because they were smart. This is an example for the rest of the country. This is an example for the rest of the world. You're about to legalize marijuana in Washington State. I know there's a lot of controversy about it. I know, maybe I'm not supposed to get up here and say, ah, legalize marijuana right away. Because there's people out there who think that it's dangerous. I don't know. I'm not from Washington. I'm not gonna tell you how to, what to do on the ground here. But I'll tell you this, after 20 years in this movement, I know this. All forward motion is good motion. You can argue yourself into the ground. All forward motion. When you guys go to the ballot box in November, and if you smoke weed, and you live in Washington, and you're not in the ballot box in November, you're an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> All right? So, I am talking to the non-assholes. When you are in the ballot box in November, remember these words. All forward motion is good motion and vote your conscience. I work for High Times Magazine, the number one marijuana magazine in the whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. You know my stage anyway. <laughs> High Times Magazine has been in business for about 40 years, and for 25 years we have held in Amsterdam the Cannabis Cup. Every year for 25 years we have judged the best marijuana in the world in Amsterdam. A couple of years ago, because of the medical conditions in the United States, we brought a few of our medical cannabis cups 
to the United States. And right now, we are working on Seattle. Four weeks from today, High Times Magazine will bring the High Times Cannabis Cup to Seattle. from today. You can buy your tickets over at the High Times booth by the main stage. You know what else you can do while you're over there? You can join the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, because it's right next to the High Times booth. For 40 years, normal has been guarding our rights. When I was a young boy, first starting to smoke marijuana, Keith Strout was on TV talking about my rights. And now I am here today, hold on bro, let me talk, I'm talking. Now I am here to tell you, proud to tell you, that you should go over to that, you should go over to the normal booth, you should shake hands with Keith Strop, and you should join his organization, because that is the best way to support national legalization. But you know the best way you support local legalization, and I'm not talking to the assholes out there, go into your ballot box, and vote your conscience. You're an asshole. Ladies and gentlemen, I am. An asshole. I am. An asshole. An asshole. An asshole. The associate publisher of High Times Magazine. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you all for your kind attention. Are you going to legalize weed? Yeah. Or are you? Yeah. Fuck yeah. What are you crazy? Of course you're going to legalize weed. <laughs> Thank you so much for your kind of attention. I want to come back here and smoke a joint on the stage next year. Yeah! Woo. I want to do that. So there you have Rick Cusick from High Times Magazine. You probably heard the, a little, there was a couple hecklers there, actually. Uh, that's the one thing that I did see. We see it from the no side, I think, more than the yes side. Not that that means anything or whatever. I didn't people see it passionate. at all from the yes side. But. No, I don't. We didn't see any heckling like that. There were people also in the in the hemposium doing it. Everything means something, Jeremiah. Well, everything means something, but still, I don't, I don't know. Just because there's people heckling, that doesn't say anything for That's the true. for the other people yeah, who have rational that. arguments who can, you know. People. Get put their emotions in check and argue rationally rather than resorting to ad hominem attacks, things like that. I wish that all people could uh, get their emotions in check that easily, but not everybody can do that. So sometimes people heckle and shout what they are passionate about, and I don't necessarily uh, think that's that's bad. But because uh, I've, you know, if I really truly believe something and I see George Bush in town or one of these other people that I don't necessarily agree with, I'll tell them what I think, and I don't mind heckling. There's a place for everything sometimes, right? So, but still, I, I prefer to be nice. I prefer myself when it's our own activists and our own people who we know we'll be friends with after November uh, to keep it clean, you know? Anyways. Um, okay, so Rick Cusick, that was cool. Um, <coughs> I want to play more Shambhala stuff, but I also want to take another bong rip. So Shambhala, we were explaining how the stages work, Karina. We explained the rock pit, which is just a big pit with a dome over it. We explained the fractal forest, mm -hmm. but there's also the village. Yeah. And explain what the village is for people. It's it's like an Ewok village amongst the trees with sort of like a big dance space in the middle. And then it's got sort of like built up walkways that are up high and low. So you can either dance up above or below or in the space in the middle. And it goes all the way around this big area. And in the front, they have like gigantic speakers that will blow out your brains. PK sound system. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's very loud. The and it's village. very bright. They have tons of lights, lots of black light, lots of amazing light shows. Yeah. And our first year there, 2011, we saw Excision. That was our, my first dubstep experience. And it was really mind-blowing. It totally was a new type of music that I had never heard before that kind of mixed hip hop beats with loud industrial machine sounds, at mm -hmm. least this particular form. I know dubstep goes back a lot further and you know, it's, it's a wide range of different sounds that are contained within the genre of dubstep, but I like that particular type and it was very cool. And now I'm gonna play Excision here for you. This was his 2012 set, the opening of it. Um, and if you want to hear more from Excision, go check him out online. You can find a ton of stuff. Very cool. I liked him and Datsik. I was, it was a toss-up between uh, whether I wanted to show you guys the Datsik video or this one. But uh, Excision it is, just because I liked him so much last year. Check. You have achieved an elevated 
So the funny thing is when you're listening to dubstep music, and if you're trying to listen to it on a computer, unless you have a really good sound system, you're probably not going to get a heck of a lot out of it. It just sounds like a bunch of screeching machine sounds and stuff. And that's how I kind of felt about it until I actually went to Shambhala, and then I was like, oh, now I understand. I was very critical of it beforehand. My roommates were listening to it. They had gone to 2010 and wouldn't stop wouldn't shut up about it for basically an entire year. The whole year. That's why we went. It was just like, okay, shut up. We're going to go. Yeah. Kind of thing. And But when you have that many speakers pumping so much bass in your dome, it's just insane. And there, there's some stuff in there that gets a little frantic for me, too. Like, the drum and bass stuff gets pretty fast and crazy, and I'm not totally into that side of things. But uh, I like the, the really sort of hip-hop side of things with the loud bass, boom, boom, boom. Two-step. 
kick drum and a snare. Kick drum and a snare. Not just a bunch of like crazy kick drums in a row. Anyways, that was Excision. Um, why don't we play right now the 420 celebration? I think that's the last Hempfest video we have. Is that right, Marius? Mm -hmm. Have we played all the other Hempfest 2012 videos? Yeah. Okay, so this is on the Sealy stage, Sunday, 420. This is the sort of final celebration they always have, um, or at least for the past four years. Jody's been invited actually to speak right before 420 at the final celebration every year that I've been there. And uh, she does a great Four job. Four years there. now. Four years in a row. They love Jody down there, as we said. So, yeah, check this out. This also features some other people. Uh, Gary Cook is the director of the Sealy stage. He is fantastic. Very cool activist. You've already seen him in a couple of videos. Ed Rosenthal's in this one as well. Um, he's critical of, he's, you can tell he's criticizing Jody in it. Um, there's, because he's a no on 502 person. And Jody's a yes on 502 person. Um, but yeah, check it out. This is 420 at the Sealy Stage, Hempfest. Seattle is the center of the marijuana universe. Yes, it is! the universe is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming up right now. And before we do, ready? come on, let's get some cash in those buckets. Get the cash in the buckets. The guy who throws the most in the buckets going to get a shirt. We got a shirt here signed by everybody. Everybody that put together this stage. Put some money in the buckets. Who wants to see after, uh, this 420 go off? Come on. You want a dollar? Look, that's all I'm asking. Maybe even a quarter for each one of you.
you go on what yeah. day it is and shit. Where are you taking hair. me? Blue shirt. Yeah. Smoke weed, everybody. Yeah. I love weed. Yeah. If I was in a gang, if I was in a gang, this would be my gang song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you roll with all roll with everybody, dog. You feel me? I'll twist it up left-handed on a ski lift wearing gloves and a blizzard at night. You understand? Know The founding fathers, Jefferson, Washington, all those guys, they used to grow up, they used to smoke it. The Declaration of Independence originally written on hemp paper. Hemp, better paper than trees, better fiber than cotton. And you can smoke it and talk about shit. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Write that down. Write it down, we'll forget. That's why John Hancock's signature was so big. He was fucking high as hell. <laughs> hell yeah, I signed that shit. Watch, 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 watch. One foot. Ben Franklin smoked all the weed. Right? I'm a steamroller, baby. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, after we smoke this weed and have the 420, I'm going to come out and uh, I have some CDs for sale because I don't have any money. Anybody broke? You ever been so broke you went to your couch again? For Tom Brown, but I got a CD, it's a sticker and a download card, and it's at least five dollars, right? So if you want to throw five dollars out of the school, but if you got ten or twenty dollars, that's cool too, because I got children and bills. And um hey, Rick, hold up. Happy 420, enjoy your hip as everybody.
but she does not have one plug, so we oh my god! Hold on! Hold on, here goes!
Take action. Do something. Promise yourself and all the prisoners of the drug war right now that you will call your representative, that you will write a letter to the newspaper, that you will post something on Facebook. That's the most simple thing you can do. Give money to a drug reform organization. Get up there and talk to family members. You must take action. This is so important because Washington State and Colorado and Oregon have legalization on their ballots this November. Initiative 502 will allow you to buy up to an ounce of marijuana legally in stores in the state without any threat of arrest whatsoever. It will help hemp become an industrial crop in the state, setting an example for the rest of your nation. And when you end marijuana prohibition here, it sends hope to drug war prisoners, not only across the U.S., but in Canada and Mexico and the families of people who are killed by this drug war every day, the drug war that spreads like a cancer around the world. You owe it to people around the world to make sure the headline in November says, marijuana legalized in Washington, not legalization failed. So please look into it. Vote yes on every initiative for legalization. Jesus is a looking a little bit uh, chipped. Let me see if I can fix it up for now. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? Oh, you didn't see that? No. Oh, on the interwebs, there's this woman in, from uh, Spain or Italy or something. She tried to fix this picture of Jesus on this church wall. I'm just not up on my internet memes. No, you don't know. That's the latest news. On okay, the all right. Trivia. I'm glad that we have David Melmo Levine here to bring us up to date on the latest internet trends. Uh, <laughs> who cut your hair? Somebody's asking in the chat. I did. That's right. We all do our own hair here, and if anybody wants their head bucked, we always offer free haircuts down here at Pod TV for everybody. Right. As long as they do them themselves. That's right. Yeah, free haircuts as long as you do it yourself. Monkey Jesus, see? They know about the monkey Jesus. Monkey Jesus. Yes, monkey Jesus is now. Do you want a bond be... rip, David? I'm good. I'm good. You good? Yeah. So, David, uh, I brought you on here because you just entered the room. Yes, and I'm but, a personality. I'm but you are a personality. Character. But you're also on the no side of the Washington State Initiative 502 side. Yeah, I listened to that whole no side of the side. that whole debate thing on the interwebs that we posted. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just you know I think that the main you also didn't support Prop 19. That's right. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I'm I did support regulate marijuana like wine. Yep. And I did support call or I do support the Colorado Initiative and the Oregon Initiative. So I'm not anti-legalization, and I'm not anti-compromise, and I'm not anti-incremental anti step, you know? I'm just, I think there is such a thing as a fatal compromise. Um, I think you, the main thrust is, it's bad, the DUI stuff is bad, but it can be fixed later. That's and, my main thrust, yes. And, and, and my answer to that is industrial hemp, in Canada, we heard the same thing then. They said, oh yeah, it's imperfect, Bill. There's, it's a little bit too over, you know, too much over regulation. Uh, it doesn't, you know, treat hemp like other agricultural crops, but we'll fix it. We'll fix it later. Right. And, and when we fix it, we'll get, you know, hemp clothes and hemp paper and hemp foods and hemp everything. Everything will be made out of hemp afterwards. Right. Didn't happen. It did not happen. And, and, but why didn't it happen? Well, I think that sometimes certain segments of the movement, especially the powerful segments of the movement, are more satisfied with superficial changes 
than the fundamental changes that the rank and file of the movement wish to see. Mm -hmm. So they get, oh, we legalized industrial hemp in Canada. Well, that's done. Let's focus on something else. You know, I think that I, I appreciate your example, yeah. but I think where it's different is in terms of what is <coughs> the criticisms of 502 are true and medical marijuana patients and others who have been driving uh, while they, after smoking marijuana and wake up the next day, so on and so forth, and are getting oh, the busted next for DUIs week. for the next week, um, are, are getting busted for these DUIs, we're going to see a lot of angry people. We're going to see a lot of patients who are suffering from it then. If it, if it t does turn into this epidemic of DUI arrests, mm -hmm. which I don't believe will happen, I just don't see that happening. I think that you can get busted for a lot of the same things now. Um, if, and for having it in your bloodstream, you can still get busted. It's just that now it's an actual limit. So we have to believe that all of a sudden the police would then be alerted to this and be changing the way they do things right away based on that. But I don't really think we see that. That's not really how police operate. This is more a tool, and it is a tool, the DUI thing, for the prosecutors, not really for police. So I don't really think the police will start going crazy and busting people for it. I just don't see that happening. Yeah, but why should we take that chance? When we have uh, well, because it Oregon is and we have... Um, it, why, why can't the movement just support the stuff that doesn't make you hold your well, nose? What if and Oregon and what if the, um, Colorado doesn't win? Well, I, I'd rather attempt to walk a few steps down the right road than succeed in walking a mile down the wrong road. Well, but it, it's always based on some sort of speculation about what might happen. Things could happen either way. It might, you have to admit that if 502 passes, it might be that cops treat it the same way they do now and don't really go that hard after DUI people. You, you, you have to admit that that is a possibility, right? The scapegoats that don't stand but is that up. But not a possibility? Well, I'm looking at history because I'm a historian. That's all I can do is when so, I make educated guesses, it's based on... So other me, examples in history. Right, that, and that's the, what's important. And we published that whole little right. examination of what happens when scapegoats hold out for equal rights and what happens to scapegoats settle for whatever time. they can get. It doesn't happen every time. No. You, well, you provided some examples. I, I there's think, examples on the other side. Well. I, well, I think, I think uh, if, if gay people, instead of fighting for equal rights, uh, settled for fines instead of jail for sodomy. They'd right. be paying fines right now instead of enjoying same-sex marriages right. in all sorts of but places. But these are very different types of issues, though. Well, no, I think scapegoating, is depending, you know... I if agree you with where you're coming from. If you from. Defi define scapegoating as harming the harmless in an institutional way, yeah. then the scapegoats who resist and demand equal rights get far better outcomes than the scapegoats that settle for whatever sort of lessening of punishment or switching of punishment that they can get. I Overall, I would say that... Go ahead, if Mike. you're going to bring up the gays as an example, there are many gays who have civil unions and they're not sitting still until they get full marriage. No, and no, but they so, didn't... What yeah. they didn't do... So good point. What I, I they didn't do is they, they didn't launch initiatives or they didn't say, uh, give us less punishment. They never argued for less no. punishment. They it's always argued issue. for, treat us the same as other it's people. Different, in different this. politically, this issue. I, don't know. I, I mean, maybe it's not that different, but it is being treated differently. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I think that the movement would be much better served if we took all our energy that we're currently spending fighting over Washington and just let people figure out Washington, given all that we've produced David, so far in the debate, and poured our energy into supporting Oregon and Colorado. But isn't there the chance that 502 passes and maybe the police don't go crazy and arrest everybody? And then announces legalized, and then and then maybe at the same time, maybe even if police do step up the DUI arrests, that a bill passes very quickly. There's already been one proposed, but it was premature, so we we figured there's going to be another one. And if that passes, don't you think that that's a valid way of doing it? Then we would have exactly what we wanted. It still that's wouldn't the, have the personal that's cultivation. That's the best case scenario. Right. The worst case scenario. But that is, is a, that is a the worst case scenario is, is that the scenario. DUI model that uh, Washington produces is incorporated into every future initiative because they said it passed and that's the thing Man. that made it pass. Well, but I find that, again, that's like a lot of what ifs. Well, this is... What if other people make it like this the, in the reason future? It so was we, we shouldn't base our decision about what we do here on those kind of what ifs. Well, the reason it was included in the first place was because of some sort of polling that Normal did. They said, boy, the main concern people had was impaired driving. And yeah. the way we're going to and that, address that, that concern is define all driving over a certain amount of nanograms as impaired driving. Right. 
I don't think Normal came up with that plan. Well, Normal actually didn't come up with that plan, but Normal said that people's main concern is uh, driving impaired. They were just saying what the, they, the, the problem. Said. They, they said that the problem is, and the polls. Right? What what we need to do is support initiatives that aren't going to create um, a lie, a myth that that becomes as big a problem as prohibition is, which is the myth of inherent impairment. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that um, promotes that idea that you take a toke and you're you're not able to safely operate um, a heavy machinery yes. is is going to be um, uh, the cause, the fundamental cause of discrimination against us for uh, as long as it takes us to so it's change that myth. On principle, you're saying we have I'm, to stand up against this kind of thing. Well, I'm saying that the danger is uh, is that uh, if this thing passes. Uh, that myth will be entrenched and will spread everywhere, and and it will replace prohibition as the way uh, we're kept uh, from getting the freedom that we eventually need to get. But why can't it just be legislated away, right away? Well, why can't why can't we let uh, legislate over regulation of industrial hemp away? Well, because because industrial hemp isn't as much as and as much as I think yeah. that hemp is a pressing issue I don't think that the political structure and it doesn't have the backing hemp does not have anybody working for it the way medical marijuana has people working for it they hemp does not have the or or you know, a, a it once did and then and then these. fake legalization took the steam out of it nah, I still don't think that that I think there was the legalization movement has moved into the medical community because that's where the pressing issue was. Some of us still People, tried to be hemp activists right. and just didn't hey. have any support or help from our fellow pot activists. Right. I understand that concept of the, how they can deflate can activism by basically appeasing yeah. some of the people by uh, offering a few small things. For sure. Labeling it Definitely what you happens, want to see but. happen, but not giving you what you want to see happen. Yeah. And then saying you got what you fought for. But there's the danger, of course, of, of stopping at least some progress in the meantime when you're standing on hey, principle. I, I will. You know what? If, if, and if it's you could make that argument more strongly if there wasn't better alternatives like Colorado and uh, Oregon. I agree with that. Let's I end on agreement. Agree. Let's say yeah. this is a civil discussion yeah. without any of the rah, rah, rah that you see down we south. Don't, we don't really do that here. We, we, we try to all stay on the same side. Yeah, of course, because we're friends and we're always going to be friends. We're always no going to be friends no matter what strategic November, differences. So all you people, us, hopefully. you people out there who are on the yes and the no side, no more insults, all right? Jody's no trophy wife. She's a hardcore, intelligent pot activist and while I may disagree her with her on this issue uh, I agree with her on 99.9999 things she says and uh, you gotta keep that all in mind that these are your brothers and sisters on the front lines disagree about strategy but focus on the argument not uh, attacking the person well said David and I'll leave you with those thoughts and thank you, thank you for letting me hijack your show Always, oh, yeah, it was right on topic, so it's perfect, David. Yeah, and I think many pe uh, there's people in the chat who appreciate your side of the argument and well, my love your comments. To all those I'm sure. In, in the chat, give him a big wet kiss for me. Bye, ya. David. David Mama Levine. Okay. Well, it's 5:52 now. Uh, we've been hitting it for two hours, and we played all our Hempfest videos. So I wanted to leave you guys with Pretty Lights from Shambhala 2012. This was a very cool sort of. Uh, in between set it's not crazy hardcore dubstep loud stuff it's more of a laid back groovy kind of thing check out pretty lights I, you can find them online they're really big right now but uh, Marius are we ready to roll on the video oh yeah I'm gonna take this bong rip first my I'm starting to lose my voice a little bit here that's the one thing about Shambhala is it's covered in dust and uh, it's pretty it's pretty crazy the you come back with a compromised immune system I'm sure to say the least I've been feeling a little sick since then but a butt a day keeps the doctor away though mm. thanks Duchess thanks Marius thanks Krina do you want to come back on and say bye yeah. Delicious.
Thanks for coming on, babe. You're welcome. Karina, that was awesome. Um, yeah, I guess next year we'll be back for our fifth <clears throat> time at Hempfest. Yeah. 2013. That should be fun. Well, things will be different it's always then, fun. I guess. It's always fun. Thanks for coming on the show. You have to come back more often. I will. We'll have to find excuses to get you on here. Just sure. to come on and look pretty and take a... <laughs> you should take a puff out of the bong next time, maybe. Okay. Oh, you're not a big bong person. No, I don't have big lungs, so... Little lungs. Okay, thanks, Krina. Thanks, Marius. Thanks to Marijuana Man. He's already gone. Um, <coughs> and thanks to Shambhala and Hemfest for really uh, giving us a good time, showing us a good time. It was great. And, yeah, we'll see you guys next Friday again, and we'll see you before that on Monday and Wednesday, too. Pod TV, baby. All right. Peace. This is Pretty Lights. Chambala, it's been an honor of fucking rocking for y'all. I'm going to end this shit with a trap from 2006. This is not the remix. You might have heard it before, but y'all, we're going to come together. Because I can tell that me and all of y'all right now, we're fucking feeling good. If y'all are feeling good, make some fucking noise. What's up? Show me nothing but love. Thank you so much. It's truly been an honor. Chabala, one time for me. Here you make some other fucking noise. Come on.